Hello, Terrence viewer. You're welcome to the blessed uh, gospel time with me, Edward J. Frimpon. As, as always, it is live on Bless TV. And today, I have with me Sir Alexi to Rivera. And we're going to discuss a wonderful subject in our Christian life. Who is that person? Who is the Holy Spirit? We are talking about the Holy Spirit. Who is he? What is the impact of the Holy Spirit? why was he released on earth and what has he come to fulfill in our lives we are going to actually elaborate on the impact and who the personality of the holy spirit and so uh i have with me alex who say alex who will help us actually know more find out more about the holy spirit but remember this is blessed tv you can listen or you can watch us live on facebook we have a facebook page and also a, a youtube channel and so you can like the page on facebook and also subscribe to our youtube channel so welcome to the show thank you very much sir. yeah and so uh the holy spirit is uh, one really important subject in our christian life you know at first when you read the scriptures people used to think Probably the Holy Spirit is a dove because the Bible used a term dove to you know depict uh, the workings of the, of the of the Spirit. And so, um, just starting it off, who is the Holy Spirit? All right. Um, thank you very much for this great opportunity to you know share my thoughts and views um, about this Holy Spirit. You see, people see the Holy Spirit as a force see it as something but i just like the way you ask the question now who a lot of people ask this question what is yes. what is the holy spirit disregarding it yes. so as you use the word who i realize that the lord is indeed good yeah because the holy spirit actually is a person is a person the holy spirit is a person just as people acknowledge the Father, the Son, as persons, and they don't use it in attributing it. Yes. In the same way, you can never use it when you want to attribute the Holy Spirit. People normally use He when they are, they are referring to the Father. Yes. He when they are referring to the Son. But yes. when it comes to the Holy Spirit, they use it, showing disrespect to the Holy Spirit. Mm. The Holy Spirit is indeed a person. God is in a tripartite form. God is in a tripartite form. God is a triune God. We have a triune God. The Father, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. These three form God. So the Father alone is not God. Okay. The Son alone is not God. The Holy Spirit alone is not God. When these three unite, that is when we have God. Okay. Now, the Father alone is Lord. Lord. The Son alone is Lord. The Holy Spirit alone yes. is Lord. Yes. But when we join the three, that is when we have God. Wow. Yes. So the Holy Spirit is Lord Himself. The Holy Spirit is Lord. You know, but someone who probably, maybe, I mean, the first I'm hearing this kind of thought about the Holy Spirit might be questioning and asking, but. Uh, the Holy Spirit, I mean, how can a spirit be a person? How could it be possible? How can a spirit be a person? Okay. You see, when you read the Bible very well, in the Old Testament, you will never hear and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit. You will not be hearing of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You will only be hearing about God. Now, in those days, the Israelites didn't know the God they were serving. From the Genesis of creation to the book of Malachi. When you read it, you will get to know that the Israelites didn't know the God you were worshipping. Let me give you a, 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 an example about this. You see, when God was leading the Israelites out of the Egyptian bandage into their promised land, they thought it was Moses leading them. So they used to call God the God of Moses, the God of Moses, the God of Moses. So it, there came a time when God brought them out of Egypt and then they got to the promised land. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry, they got to the Red Sea. Yes. They were like, oh, Moses. So were there no cemeteries 
in Egypt that you brought us here that we should come and die in this place. Why? Because they didn't know the God they were serving. But you know something? Even when God was able to uh, uh, let them pass through the Red Sea successfully, yeah. when they got to the desert and then they started feeling hungry, they forgot that our God is a God of miracles. <laughs> so they started talking about it again. Mm -hmm. Moses, we know your God can lead us out of Egypt. We know your God can lead us to cross this Red Sea. Yes. But this time we are hungry. We are hungry. So they were talking to Moses. They didn't know God. They didn't know God. So in those times, in those dispensations, what you hear was, and the Spirit of God came, and the Spirit of God came when you yes. read the books of the prophets, both the major and the minor prophets. Yes. You got to know that even uh, uh, when Samson, yes. when Samson was about to do a mysterious thing, the Bible records, and the Spirit of God came unto Samson. Yes. So that means the Spirit of God was actually not staying. The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit comes and leaves. It in comes the, in the, and in the old in the old dispensation. And that is why it clearly shows in the Bible in Genesis. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was all over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering. It was hovering. It was not dwelling. Hovering. It comes, performs a specific task, and then it leaves. Yes. So in those days, the Spirit of God was there. I mean, the Holy Spirit was there. Yes. But we didn't know. Yes. So they used to call it the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. Yes. The Spirit of God. Yes. The Spirit of God is God himself. Wow. You know, yeah, you know, even the Bible says God is spirit, and yes. in, in, it's very clear. So, uh, yeah, in the old dispensation, they didn't know. It was ignorance. But then the spirit was around, but not not staying with them. Yeah, but it came it. And, and leaves. So I mean, move, moving on. What has changed now? What is now the new reality in a new I mean uh, dispensation, the new creation? What is the reality? What is the difference between the Holy Spirit of the Old Testament and the New Testament? Has it not come to stay, live within us? The Holy Spirit now has come to stay. It has come to stay. And when did it come? When did that actually happen? The Holy Spirit comes individually. The Holy Spirit is not there like a pool of water and then someone will go and then fetch some or something. The very moment you became born again, that is when you had your first interaction with the Holy Spirit. I see. And saying born again, uh, viewers, it actually means um, confessing Jesus as Lord of your life, yeah. repenting of your sins and confessing Jesus as... So that very moment that you receive Jesus into your heart, the Holy Spirit came to dwell inside of you. Inside of you. Wow. That's powerful. And so it's, it's wonderful to see, you know, from all that you came from, talking about God, uh, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Yes. That's and right. so uh, that means the Holy Spirit is a representation of the Father and the Son on earth now. Mm. You see, these three, as I said, they work hand in hand. They are united and they work hand in hand. The Father does not work alone. The Son does not work alone. The Holy Spirit does not work alone. When the Father is working, it is actually the three of them working. When the Son is working, it's actually the three of them working. When the Holy Spirit is working, it's actually the three of them working. Let me explain this trinity to the viewers using the form. Okay. Now, with the form, we've got the house, and yeah. we've got the battery, yes. and then we've got the chip or the memory cell. Yes. Now, when you don't have all these three joined together, there's no way the phone can function as a phone. You be when you have a phone with a battery inside with a SIM card, mm -hmm. that is when you can make calls. Yes. In the absence of the SIM card, you have the phone all right. Yes. There's battery in it, but you can never make calls. Yes. When you have the phone or the housing and the SIM card without the battery itself too, you cannot make calls. Sure. Because the battery gives it power. Yeah. And then when you have the battery and the SIM card without the housing, it will just be in your heart. You can never use it to make calls. Right. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit 
is actually representing God now in that in that dispensation. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wonderful. So the Holy Spirit is the representation of God in our dispensation, in our life now, in the new creation. And so uh, let's get straight to the main point that I wanted to ask you. Yeah. What is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Now that we have received Christ, now that He's in us, what is His responsibility? Oh. The Holy Spirit has got a lot of roles it's playing. Mm. Now, there are a lot of people when they begin speaking in tongues, when they begin speaking in other tongues, yeah. they stand boldly and proclaim, I have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit. But the main responsibility or function of the Holy Spirit yeah. is found in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, We shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes unto you, and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and then in Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Yeah. So that means the Holy Spirit comes with power. It gives you power. And this power in Greek is called dunamis. dunamis. And dunamis is defined as the active force of a dynamite. Mm -hmm. Now a dynamite is used to, 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 to crack every rock or hard rocks beneath the, the ground. Yeah. That is what this um, um, miners use and other stuff. Yeah. It cracks all the hard rocks mm -hmm. in the ground. Yes. So when you get this Holy Spirit, it serves as a dynamis, a dynamite in you, wow. and then it will propel you, it will give you the zeal to witness for God. Wow. So when someone claims you or she has the Holy Spirit, and that person doesn't have the zeal to propagate the gospel, I doubt. Mm. I doubt. Wow. Speaking of tongues alone is not a major proof of the Holy Spirit. According to the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, the Bible says that, and this signs shall accompany them that believe. In it, take note, yes. accompany them that believe. Yes. In my name, they shall cast out demons. Yes. And they shall speak in unknown tongues. Mm. Mm. So that means speaking of tongues is actually because you believe. Wow. Let me, let, before, before you continue, let me read the chapter that you're talking about. Okay. Mark chapter 16, then verse 16. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and so, you know, verse 15 downwards. All right. Jesus is speaking now. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. This sign shall follow them that believe. That believe. believe. Okay. In my name shall they cast out oh, devils. Jesus. They shall speak with new tongues. Yes. And they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So the point is really believing. Believing. So there are some people who have got the Holy Spirit all right. But because they don't believe, they can never speak in tongues. Tongue speaking is believing. Mm. Let, let me declare here. We have our brethren, the Jehovah Witness people. Yes. They are actually doing the kingdom work. They have the power and the boldness to witness. Yet, they don't speak in new tongues. Why? Because they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Mm. So actually, they actually have it. Yes. Because without the Holy Spirit, you will not get the boldness to, to, to share in the propagation of the gospel. Mm. You don't get the boldness to witness for Christ. So they actually have it. Okay. But because they don't believe in it, they cannot speak in tongues. Wow. So the Holy Spirit actually fortifies us to proclaim the gospel. The Holy Spirit, you know, um, the major sign that you have the Holy Spirit is when you have that conviction, mm. that passion, that inner mm. zeal. To go out and preach Christ to somebody. So that is the major sign. And so 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 speaking in tongues, what will you classify it? Is it what what is it? <laughs> Alright, there are two different kinds of tongues. Yes. We have the tongues of men and then the tongues of angels. I remember I used to fellowship at the church in the Akuma. Yes. And then I had this friend, Ekeso, Daniel Ekeso. Yes. And then you see. He was a Nigerian and he spoke their language as well as a little bit of Ga yes. and then English. Yes. But when he was 
baptized by the Holy Spirit. He started speaking in French. No, he doesn't know how to speak in French. But whenever he's praying, you hear him clearly praying in French. In French. In French. But he sees it that he's praying in other tongues. Wow. It is actually the tongues of men. The tongues of men. You see, when the Holy Spirit first, when the uh, disciples first encountered the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the Bible says when Peter went out to preach, yes. he was preaching in his language, but everybody was hearing it in his or her own language. Wow. The Persians, the Jews, and a whole lot of stuff. Yes. So, mind you, if you are speaking the tongues of men, yes. that is, there is a, 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 an interpretation to it. Mm. Let me give you this clear example. An apostle went to Malaysia mm -hmm. for a conference, yeah. and then he was told, he was called that his only daughter had been admitted to the hospital at the point of dying. So he went to his hotel room and he was busy praying in tongues, praying in tongues. He didn't know the language. He was just praying in tongues, praying in tongues. And then someone just stabbed him and said, Pastor, I spent the late with faith that your daughter has been healed. Wow. That was a Malaysian pastor. Yes. And I was like, like seriously, I was speaking in tongues. You don't understand? And I was like, no, I had you speak in my language. Wow. You were speaking in my, my language. My God. That is the tongues of men. A lot of people have gotten this one. Tongues of men. Yes. But because we've not gotten the interpretation, we are yet to identify the particular tongue. And there is this diverse tongue called the tongues of angels. Tongues of angels. That one, when you speak it, you are speaking mysteries. My God. Nobody understands it. It doesn't need any interpretation. You are speaking directly to God. So there are two different types of tongues. Two different types of tongues. And is it possible someone can be able to uh, differentiate or identify when I am speaking in the tongues of men and when I'm speaking in the tongues of angels? Of course. How? One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Wow. So actually, as you begin to speak, the person who has this gift has also been blessed with the discerning of spirits. Yes. So the person will discern and will be able yes. to tell that, oh, yeah, this is this, this is not it. Mm. I see. That's wonderful. <laughs> So yeah, we're still talking about the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit has come to do in our lives, what is his role, what is his responsibility, what shows that you have the Holy Spirit. And, and I believe that, you know, you, you've, you've been blessed so far, you've been blessed so far by what uh, say Alexa shared with us so far. This is still Blessed TV, it is the blessed gospel time, and with me, Edward, Eddie Bless, Fred Pond, and so... Uh, we're talking about the Holy Spirit and we delve into tongue speaking, which many people believe is the major sign that you have the Holy Spirit. But Mark chapter 16, uh, 15 to 17 has made us understand that, you know, I mean, preaching of the gospel or Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is actually a clear evidence that preaching of the gospel is that sign that shows that you have the Holy Spirit. Wow. So, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, um, you know, there are so many thoughts going into my mind because of uh, the misconception that has to do with the Holy Spirit and all that. And so, how do I grow and build my relationship, my friendship with the Holy Spirit? How do I get so close to the Spirit that I, I get to receive wisdom from Him? All right. This question, let me explain it with this scenario. If there is a pool of water, yes, and you want to 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 you know be wet, fully wet, maybe you are wearing a long gown, you want to be fully wet. Yes. What do you have to do? You have to go deep into it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are washing a cloth, yes, you can decide to just hold a piece of it. Just a piece. Yes. And wash that side. Yes. This side will remain unwashed. Mm -hmm. So if you want to to be in total interaction with the Holy Spirit, it demands a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. And the major thing 
the major thing mm -hmm. is that you should be convicted. You should be convicted you of the inner conviction. You have to have inner conviction. And you have to believe that without the Holy Spirit, you are nothing. You get what I mean? I so with that one, it will give you some, some level of you know, zeal to, to devote yourself to the actions of the Holy Spirit. So as Christians, the Holy Spirit is our enabling power. It enables us to do a whole lot of things. A whole lot of things. The things we're not being able to do. You see, when Jesus was ascending to the throne of heaven after his resurrection, yeah. the disciples were, you know, were, 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 were feeling bad. Because they were like, Jesus, as you are going, who is going to help? Who is going to propagate the gospel? Yes. Who is going to do these miracles? Who is going to do this? So they were confused. They were feeling bad. They were worried. And Jesus promised them that he is not going and leaving them alone. Comfort but he will send the Holy Spirit to come and comfort them. So the Holy Spirit right here, his comfort motivates us to do the work of God. Wow. That's wonderful. The Holy Spirit comforts us. The Holy Spirit, you know, when you read, I think, I don't know whether you have the amplified version of that particular scripture where Jesus told the disciples that he is going, but he, would, he wouldn't leave them comfortless, but he shall bring unto them another comforter. That word comforter, there are actually seven attributes mm. that defines the comforter. And um, I, I might not get all the attributes. It means a helper, advocate, uh, strengthener, you know, so all these are attributes of the Holy Spirit, attributes of the word comforter that Jesus used there when he told the disciples as he was ascending to heaven. So yeah, you, 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 we've talked about who the Spirit is, we've talked about how to grow, how to grow mindfulness. We said we should have inner conviction um, with, with the Spirit and all that. And so, you know, there is also an idea, there is also a thought that we have that the Holy Spirit has taken the place, you know, of, of, of God or is representing God in our life. So, when I'm praying, we know, we have the understanding that we are praying to God in the name of Jesus. So, in that particular instance, how do I involve the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus only told us to pray to God in His name. There was no mention of the Holy Spirit. Some of yeah. you might be confused there. Okay. You see, like we said earlier, the Holy Spirit is God's representative on this earth. Yes. Now, when Jesus was... In fact, let, let, let me different it. When Jesus was on this earth, Jesus never mentioned the word God. He never mentioned God. Oh. Jesus, you can read the books of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus was always our father, our father, our father. Because at that time, he had departed himself from the father. Mm. So, we didn't have God. Mm. But we had the father there. I, see. I said, if you can remember, that the father alone is not God. Yes. Jesus, the son alone, is not God. Mm. The Holy Spirit alone is not God. But the three come together to be God. Mm. So Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit is our Lord Holy Spirit. Wow. The Father is Lord. But when you mention God, you are actually referring to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay. So now, if you were asking when you are praying, how you can yeah, invoke yeah, the yeah, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Listen, when you are praying, how yeah. do we pray? We pray according to the Word of God. Okay. So it is actually the Holy Spirit who brings you the revelation as to what you should pray about. You don't know what you have to pray about. Sure. It is actually the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Bible says it is the Spirit of God which quickens us. The flesh profited nothing. So maybe you, 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 you might think you'll be praying about this, you'll be praying about this. There are numerous occasions you decide to pray about a certain subject and you end up praying differently. Yes, it happens all the time. Because the way of man may seem right in the eyes of man, but the end leads to destruction. It is only the way of God that leads to life. And the way of God is being shown by the Holy Spirit. So when you are praying and then you are going astray, when you are praying and you are praying in the flesh, 
when you are praying and you are not praying according to the word, I don't call it prayer, I call it noise making. Mm -hmm. You are just making noise. Prayer without the word, prayer without the Holy Spirit, it is not prayer. It is what? It, it, it is noise. <laughs> because when you are praying, we pray according to the word of God. Yes. The word of God is the language of God. Right? Yeah. So if you don't understand the language of God, how can you communicate with God? Wow. <laughs> you got what I mean? Yeah. yeah. For I instance, I, I'm an Akan. Mm -hmm. I speak Chi and then English. Yes. If I want to communicate with someone in maybe from the northern region yeah. who doesn't understand them English, can we communicate? No. You yes. can never. Yes. So it is actually the Holy Spirit who gives you. You, 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 you know, uh, even the words to speak, mm. the words to speak in prayer. In prayer, the Bible says it is the Spirit of God that even gives us the power, even to will, even to will. It is the power of God. Paul, I remember Paul said, "We don't know what we should pray, mm. except the Holy Spirit, or mm. seek the Holy Spirit." Mm. And so He actually gives us that vocabs, that particular word. You know. You, you, you just can't say anything in prayer. There sure. are things that are not allowed in prayer. God is a principled God. And mm. in everything, there, there are principles. And there are principles in prayer. And if you build your life so strong with the Holy Spirit, I believe you get to that uh, level of understanding that the Spirit is actually the one that enables us to pray the right way to receive the answers from God that we are actually seeking to receive. And so... Ha, uh, it's been wonderful, it's been wonderful, expose, wonderful uh, journey with God. You know, it, it, it's a gradual process. This show, this program is specially made to clear the misconception, the doubt, the wrong thought that we have about many subjects in our Christian norm. And gradually, we will, we will try to bring, you know, the subjects and clear all the doubt and misconception that is out there. And so today... We talked about the Holy Spirit and time has run out, but then I'll let him have his last words before, you know, we close the show. And so what would you have to encourage somebody, tell somebody who probably doesn't have the, who hasn't received Christ and tell him about the importance of receiving Christ and building a life with the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to you listening to me here that being a Christian, your power is the Holy Spirit. And in fact, a Christian is someone in whom Christ lives. So someone in whom Christ lives, the Holy Spirit dwells in that person. So if you are out there looking at me or listening to me, and then you know deep within you that you are not born again, you know deep within you that you don't have the Holy Spirit. See? The Holy Spirit is like a magnet that connects you with God. It is the Spirit that bears witness that indeed you are a son or a child of God. It is the Holy Spirit in you that will let God see you and then say, that, Oh wow, this is my son or this is my daughter. So if you are there and you have not received this Holy Spirit, just open up your hearts and ask God, fill you with the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And if you are there, you think you have the Holy Spirit because you speak in tongues. Let me tell you, brother, that tongue speaking, it is a sign of abundance of rain. The rain is about to fall in your life. The latter rain, the much, uh, much talk about the latter rain will fall on you when you desire it. Don't let that be your comfort zone. You can speak in tongues all right, but it shouldn't be your comfort zone. Brethren, it should never be your comfort zone. Break camp and advance. Seek for the power of the Holy Spirit so that you will share in the propagation of the, Holy, uh, of the gospel. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you. The Holy Spirit is there to motivate you. The Holy Spirit is there to bring things to your remembrance. So don't even fear. Some people think maybe when they go out to preach the gospel, they, they, they will not even know what to say. Let me tell you something. It is not about you. It is about God. It is not about you. So the Holy Spirit knows what to do at the right time. God bless you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I believe that viewer, you've been blessed. 
by the subject that we talked about, the Holy Spirit, the personality of the Holy Spirit. And personally, I received the Holy Spirit in the year 2009. I can actually give you the month. It was in the month of May. It was an SU, Scripture Union. I was in senior high school and I had desired and yearned for the Holy Spirit for so long. And that time, you know, we, we had actually closed the service. Mm -hmm. And the leader, the man of God, just gave a call for people to give their heart to Christ and also ask us who desires for the Holy Spirit. And, and, and so I went for it with other people and I was among the few who actually did down. It, you know, he, he only said we should mention one word. Mm -hmm. He said, if you want to receive the Spirit, just mention Jesus, Jesus. Je that was, you know, I, I believe and yearn so much for it. And so I immediately I began mentioning it. One, two, the third time I started blasting another tongue. Uh, in all of my life, I would say that was one of the most happiest days of my life. The day I received the Holy Spirit. And I tell you what, my life has never been the same since 2009. It's been a decade of knowing uh, more than a decade actually of knowing the Holy Spirit and experience. I thank God I thank God for the experience and so all too soon this is our time will allow us on the show it is uh, the blessed gospel time on blessed TV my name is Edward Eddie Bless Prempon today I had a wonderful guest Sir Alex in Tori Vera and he's blessed us a lot and so stay tuned to blessed TV very much subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bless TV, and also like our page on Facebook. It is a Bless TV. God bless you so much, and we'll come away another time. God bless you.